Well, these are quite officially burning. That's a bad situation. What we have here is the front and rear motor mount from a 1987 Toyota FX16. And uh, this is the method that I have chosen to get the rubber out of the inside of them. I have lit coals in my charcoal chimney. I uh, and have this grate from an old dog kennel, and I have set this on top of it, uh, much to the chagrin of all of my neighbors, I'm sure. Um, I'm going to burn the rubber out of these inserts. How will I remove it once it is finally burned? I have no idea. Probably just shove it out of there with a screwdriver or something, but we're gonna find out. Mmm, hot mount. It is warm. Mm. It don't want to go out. Getting a longer screwdriver. Whoa. See, that's warm now. Oh, there's that. Stand in there. Burn. See if I care. And there we go. Clean. Who's next? Or am I gonna let it cool? You know, I have no idea. Put it on the concrete to burn everything. I'll put it in the rocks. Hopefully it won't light anything on fire. Next one. Oh yeah, properly on fire as well. Oh, keep forgetting it's really hot. Yep. You know, there used to be a firefighter who lived in this house. I bet the neighbors wish he lived here now. That's, that's on fire. But that one's not melted out yet as much as the previous one was. Here's a close up. Oh, that guy's cooling down. He's looking good. Very clean, very nice. This one's gonna take a minute, I think. Oh good, wind is good. Wind, wind seems like that'll make things better. I could do without the cracking and popping. Oh, uh-oh. See, that's a bad situation. Well, it's gone from bad to worse. Apparently, the uh, piece on the outside that I thought was all steel actually has rubber in it, and that's what bonded it to the outside. So that's fun. That's broken off now. To figure out how to put that back. Nah, not, not gonna happen. Hi, how are you? Look at that. What a mess we got going in here. I'm gonna douse that. Hoses are good for water. Ugh. The spray is strong with this one. A little something like that. There we go. That's nice. All right. Got that too, all right. Oh. Oh. What a stink. All right. That's all cleaned up. I'm trying to melt the rubber off those tongs. These probably still too hot to touch, but. What I didn't count on is that that piece and then this piece here are both held on with uh, rubber. So I'm gonna have to reconnect them, maybe with some window weld. <clears throat> I bet that'll work if we clean it up really good and stick it back on there with window weld. Uh, maybe, but I can stick the new 3D printed polyurethane mounts in there and uh, we can figure out how to reattach these bits and then get it back on the car. Quench them. Probably totally the wrong way to do this, and I've probably, you know, invalidated the structural integrity of these, but, you know, I know nothing, so I don't claim to do things the right way, I just claim to do them, and uh, then they're done, so that's what we've done here. Let's see how those motor mounts fit in there. These are disgusting and filthy and black, almost as if they've been burned. Clean them up a little bit, see about how those mounts fit. Oh, 
I've got my handy dandy kitchen paper towel here because we're out of rags of all kinds. Ooh, look, a piece of bread pad. That'll clean it up nice. Kind of wonder with these 3D printed mounts if I'd want to use any lube in here. I know with normal poly bushings that you insert into, you know, control arms and the like, you, you lube them up somehow. Um, maybe white lithium or some other sort of grease. I'm not sure. Okay. Uh, I mean, you know, it's not clean, but it's as clean as it's going to get. As long as these inserts that Paul's performance has made fit in here, then we're going to be good to go. So here they are, 3D printed, 90A, I believe, polyurethane. Looks like this is for the smaller one, and this is for the bigger one. So I'm going to start with the smaller one, see if she fits. It does not. Very much does not fit. So I think that he has sized these... <laughs> So you could do, um, you know, the appropriate thing and press out <laughs> this central collar instead of burning them out. I thought we were sizing them so I could fit them in after that collar is burned out, but now it looks like I have to go and press out these, and that's fine. I don't have a press, though. I uh, got the Sawzall here. We got the motor mount from the FX-16 there. We'll see if we can't cut through that inner collar of the motor mount. See it there? There's an outer and an inner. We need that inner out of there and then we'll knock it out with a chisel or something. Rolling. Speed. Action. Rolling. Sound. Speed. Listen, I'm bad at doing video stuff. So here where we're at now in the video, you should be seeing me cutting out the inner collars of those motor mounts to put in the polyurethane bushings. Somehow I lost all that footage. I, I don't even know, I don't know. I only got the one phone that I shoot everything on and my 360 camera that I sometimes use. Uh, I don't remember what I did, but I don't, I don't have it. I also don't have the, the footage of Miles removing the cross member from underneath the car originally, and when he did, he found a bunch of grease in the wheel well over there because that boot was broken. The CV boot is broken, so, um, I then took the axle out of the car, didn't film that, and took the boot off the axle, didn't film that. But you're gonna pick up right here with me trying to knock the CV joint off of the end of the axle. And that's it. You know, I just wanna work on cars. I don't wanna, I don't wanna film it. I don't wanna edit video, but I do it for you. Why? I don't know, but you tell me. Do you, do you like it? My plan is to show you me smacking this spider gear off of this axle for the FX. So I'm going to whack it with a hammer. Lots of videos online show somebody using the back end of one hammer, sitting it there, hitting the, hitting the front end of the other hammer. I don't know how to explain it, but in any case, I'm going to start hitting this with a hammer and see if I can get it to come off of there. I wish I had the right hammer to put on the other side of it but I do not. I keep trying it with this. And I've got it set up now to where I can get more of a straight down shot on it, but you know, not really. Oh, it moved. It's freaking off of there. Look at it. Here it is covered in grease and dirt and everything else. And is the clip still on there? Sure is. All right. I'm gonna clean this up and uh, take it back to the other house and put the new boot on and then finally be done with this job. These are all clean now. Cleaned up the tip there. Filled that up with brake clean. Cleaned it all out. It's all down there now. I don't have a tripod, so we're just gonna kick it old school here. Whatever that means. Um, so in the box with your boot, you're gonna get, you know, a boot. There's a boot. You're gonna get a big bag of 
axle grease that you're going to have to schmoo into everything, but that can wait till later. And then you're going to get some clamps. Uh, this is actually two different sets of clamps uh, from two different boxes here. One's for the other end, but I'm not going to do that one right now because I'm lazy. And I'll just wait until it breaks. It's still, you know, kind of good. So we got our clamps, we got our boot, and we got a new clip for the end of the splines here. So I'll take this one off and I'll put my new clip on and that way we'll make sure that everything will be retained properly. I don't have a tripod like I said so I'm just gonna um, maybe I'll set you up somewhere and do a time lapse or uh, nothing at all you know because why film it doesn't matter that's what I'm gonna do I'm gonna put a new clip on there I'm gonna try to put that in back on I have no idea how it goes on but I'm gonna try to get it back on there slip it over that clip and uh, preferably put the boot on before I do that That'd be a good idea. You'll have to excuse me while I use the phone that's recording to figure out how to put this clip on because I have no idea how to put that clip on. Okay, see that? Clip's on. Um, yeah, don't ask why it's oblong. It doesn't really matter. Does it? Nah, couldn't possibly. What you should do is get an appropriately sized socket. This is not it, this is too small. But I'd say like a 26 would work here. That would let the C-clamp expand out into the socket and then you'd be able to kind of push it over top and let it click down into place. But I didn't have that so I did it the wrong way. And now here we are. Sorry about the fan noise. I'm just charging up the lawnmower battery so the children can mow the yard because that's how we do it now. We don't just fill the thing with gas. We gotta charge up the batteries. I thought it was a good idea. You know? I still stand by how it cuts but hey you know that's a that's a battle for another time. Okay, so now, apparently, this sucker is just gonna slide on right there, but I think first we have to fill this with grease. And before I go doing that, my question is, like, how am I gonna clamp this thing? You know, I don't wanna be rolling around if I gotta go to somebody else's house to use a clamp thing or whatever. Like, uh, I don't wanna do that um, with a bunch of grease inside of the thing, so. I think I'm gonna maybe talk to my buddy Kel and see if he has the clamp tool. And then you go clankety, 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 whatever. And if he does, then maybe I'll go borrow that. And I'll come back and I'll fill this up with grease and finish this damn job finally. All right, got the tool from Kel. So you put the band in through the top there, you wrap it around in here, and then you do some things with a ratchet and, you know, you know, whatever. Let's, uh, let's get to it and maybe I'll be able to show you. First things first, we want to fill this back up with grease and stick it on here and then fill the boot up with grease and then cinch everybody up before we start banding. So... We'll grease it up first. I'm just going to kind of prop it up there. I'm just going to cut a corner off of the edge of this bag and kind of use it like a frosting piping bag, I guess. Now, this is all cleaned out with brake clean, and it's been dry for a while now, so we're just going to schmoo this into there until it's full. Now I'm going to put it around the edges on all the ball bearings. I'm going to get it all over me too. That's the next part of the plan is just to get it all over your fingers. Gloves are good for something like this. Don't have any of those. There we go. Now it's moving. So just, you know, from what I gather, I'm going to smoosh it around and uh, get some grease back onto the bowls. Get it so everything's moving nice and good again. You can see some of the old grease still coming out of there. Probably didn't clean it good enough, but you know, whatever. I feel pretty good about that. Sit it down for a moment and maybe, you know, here, just slap that down in there. Might as well. Whatever's in here, going in this boot. Everything's gonna go everywhere when I try to put it on the shaft, but you know, whatever. Probably should have put it on the shaft before I tried to grease it. Cool. 
We'll let half of this fall out because it will. All right, let's just take this end and jam it on this end like we know what we're doing. It's clearly not gonna work. You ought to witness this, I guess. But it's not gonna go well. move. Uh, I should not have put all this grease on here before now though. I'm pretty sure that's a fact. Because I have no idea if the splines are actually lined up or not. I have no idea if I've gotten the clip in past there. I can't see a damn thing. So awesome. It's it's rotating right now. That's good. That feels good. I can't pull it off with my hand. Also good. I feel like it's on there. All right, at this point, it's almost a certainty that I've done this wrong. So I can feel inside there the clip that is, uh, yeah, that's it right there. It's been mangled sideways because I didn't compress it enough. And I've seen some tips where people use zip ties to compress them or whatnot, but you know, the main point is, is that um, I didn't pay attention and I put the grease in first when I should have not done that. So now I get to clean this all out again and go right back over to the place with the vise and knock the spider gear off of the end of the splines again and uh, probably end up using my old clip and God knows what else, but hopefully the splines aren't totally messed up. This axle is on obtainium, so. Uh, should have paid more attention. So what's fun is that I figured I'd have to hammer it apart and I went to pull on it just because I was like, I'm gonna pull on it and it's not gonna come apart, but I'm gonna see how stuck it is. And it came apart. And then it flung grease everywhere and it got, took a chunk out of my, I don't know, I hit this on something. I don't know what I hit it on. Now that we're back to having it apart, let's see if we can find that clip without ruining all this grease. Here's our clip. I'd say it's done. We're gonna go back with the stock one, which is probably also done. The round clip, I feel like is gonna make the replacing of the end much easier. But I've got the same problem in getting it on that I had in the other one, which is, I don't know how. Not without bending it significantly. I'll stick it in the groove there. I probably ought to clean these off. I don't want to know what I did to the splines, honestly. Look, they're fine. We're just going to go ahead and say that they're fine. And we're going to keep moving. I can't believe that worked. <laughs> Hopefully this clip is not too bent out of shape and we'll be able to get the end over top of it without too much hassle. You can turn it, set it down on there, turn it a little, and you'll feel when it clicks onto the splines. And then you won't be able to turn it anymore. But uh, current point in time, it feels like it's not gonna. I hope we don't end up in the same situation with the clip. It's not even to the clip yet. <laughs> which is also very concerning, right? Because, um, does that mean the splines are messed up? I don't know. It should have just slid down to where the clip is and it didn't do that and it's not doing that. Man, I think we're in the same situation. Bend in a pin, bend in the clip, I mean. Now this one, he don't want to let go. He's not a fan of letting go. He wants to hang around forever. So, yeah, I totally messed it up. I mean, you think I would have learned a lesson the first time, but I didn't, because I'm real dumb. Oh, this is all wrong. I knew that would do it. I mean, 
I've ruined this with the grease. I should just undo the grease situation. All right, here's the deal. You're not gonna ask me how it happened, and we're just gonna deal with the fact that this is on here now. In reality, I broke several zip ties trying to do a zip tie trick where you, you zip tie it around the little C-clip, and then you push everything down over top of that zip tie. It's supposed to act as like a spring compressor and keep it, and that didn't work. Four times of that, it didn't work. So I just took the clip off again, squeezed it real tight, put it back on, squeezed it again as much as I could, and then I just put my finger in there while I was pushing this on real gentle-like, and I just kind of worked the clip in, and then I tapped it a little with the hammer, and I felt around, and the clip was not exposed, and then I tapped it a little more and tapped a little more, and sure enough, it just sunk right down onto the shaft. So, we are home, and now it's time to put some actual clamps on this thing. I'm gonna use the tool that Kel let me borrow. I'm gonna use the clamps that came with the boot and I'm going to band up the two ends, not too tight, of the CV boot. And then this thing will finally be done and ready to go back on the car. I won, but at what cost? At what cost? That's no, not so bad. What sucks is that this end is leaking and um, probably also needs to be replaced, the cap here and then all the boots and what, but I'm not gonna do that. I'm just gonna put it back in the car and wait until the boot breaks. So that's what's next, is heading under the car, put the axle back in, and then we can finally put the cross member with the new polyurethane bushings back in the car. That's the axle back in. It took me a little bit of doing because I had to line up the inside flange. Um, a certain spot on the stub axle has a pin that it makes everything line up properly and I got it wrong the first time so I had to do that. I had to pop a ball joint out so that I could move the strut assembly out far enough to be able to get the axle back in. But now the axle's back in. I'm using the same cotter pin that I used before. Shouldn't do that. Also missing a castle thingy, whatever you call that thingy that covers the nut. Don't know where that's at. Feel like it should have one. Doesn't. Whatever. A lot of cleanup to do. There's grease everywhere back here from the old split boot, and there's plenty of grease inside the wheel from the same, from the from the boot that I broke. All right, cleaned out the wheel and cleaned out behind the suspension. Everything's nice and clean now. Still dirty, but next step, let a car pull into the garage. Here it comes right now. Well, with the CV boot and fully repaired and all the grease cleaned up, that means that we can get back to work putting the cross member back in the car. And when I say we, I mean him. Not him. All right, he's just gonna loosen up these mounts so that when we put them on the car, we got wiggle room. We need the room to wiggle. Yeah. Yeah, concrete's good for your back. You know what I mean? Uh -huh. Okay, so the problem we have here is that uh, these printed polyurethane mounts have been printed so they don't need a metal collar inside of them. But uh, they're so tight to the bolt. I'm going to go ahead and run this bolt in from out here. I mean, it's, that's taut. Well, this will only take a day. Cool. Is it going in? I don't know, it's going so slow I can't tell. And then this. Hey, <laughs> Junior. I don't know what you're complaining about. You're just holding that 30 pound thing up. There she goes. Look out. Oh yeah. Okay. Oh. That end is good. BFH time, baby. Oh, I hope it goes out. Goodbye. Yeah. Excellent. Oh, the problem is I have no idea where the freaking hole is and I went too far. What do you mean? I went too far. <laughs> Back it out. <laughs> we'll just catch you up. 
after after we get this done. Go on and treat me like a jerk. Well, when it comes to play, girl, if I'm so bad, why won't you roll his way? No, oh, but there's nothing like it, love. All right, we'll just put the plastics back on and uh, put it down on the ground and, you know, take it for a rippity do and floor it. Coming down. Stand clear. Coming down. Here's your guns. All clear. Officially, he gets one huge bite. He always sees the big one. Whoa, 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 whoa there. Oh, you break good. First drive with Paul's performance 3D printed motor mounts in the FX16. Um, he also makes these for the MR2, which he sent me. So far, so good. I mean, uh, yeah, headlights are good. Wow. No bucking, no kicking, no shaking. You can feel it now. It's stiff. Yeah, it's very stiff. Making a lot more noise than it was before. Oh yeah, it's good. Yeah. Wow. Woo! She steers again? Goodness sakes. Fix that steering wheel. We still didn't fix the steering wheel. God dang it. Please go that way. Go that way? Yeah, that's what I like. It still walked on me. I mean, the test is the burnout, right? So, and you gotta do the burnout at Kel's house. Which just requires more power because you're going downhill. But other way. You might not be home. That'd be funny. they will hold up we will be torture testing them throughout the season but uh for now i think that puts a wrap on this video kel just so. said was that you <laughs> of course he did yeah so that'll be a wrap on this video go out there and find your apex because it's better late than never see you later